Hi and welcome. In this video, I want to go with you through the Solidity version 0.0 breaking changes. Solidity version 0.5 is out for about two weeks now. And I saw today that I can actually use it now in Remix. And um, I've played around a little bit. I went through these changes. Uh, you can open the docs and just read them through with me. Uh, if you go so, to solidity.readthetocs.io and then go to solidity in depth and solidity 0.5.0 breaking changes. And then you're pretty much at this uh, page. And in uh, this video today, I want to highlight some parts and um, there, there might be some things uh, in, in general you want to read through this document if you do smart contracts and see if your smart contracts need updates. And in this video specifically, I want to highlight some parts which concern my smart contracts that I had in my project, which uh, are very common things. And I think they are affecting a majority of people out there. So they might gonna affect you as well. Um, I don't want to spend too much um, on these semantic only changes, uh, read through them. The thing that I found uh, very, very interesting and actually a, a good change is that peer and view functions are now called using the static call up code instead of call. So you can't, it's completely disallowing changes on the EVM level. And the rest is uh, for me just for information. Now going to the semantic and syntactic changes, uh, the functions call, delegate, call, and so on, they are now accepting only a single byte argument. You might remember that when you do low level calls to other functions, then you can do this uh, address call and then the function signature uh, and then the function arguments, ABC. And now you have to, to change that. Uh, you have to um, calculate or get a single byte value for this function signature and then the function arguments uh, by doing an ABI dot encode with signature and then the function signature and then the function arguments. How does that look like? That looks like this. So I have this uh, smart contract with, uh, I called it solidity changes and I locked it in at compiler version 0.5.0. And I have one function called call test and I can get here an address of another contract. And I'm, I'm basically doing on this address, I do a call. And instead of calling a specific function with arguments, I first encode it with this ABI dot encode with signature. So where is this other contract going to? I have another contract on the very bottom of the file. I called it other contract and I have one function called update my variable uh, with one function argument called some unsigned integer. And I'm going to uh, update my, my unsigned integer here in my other contract. And then I'm going to emit an event just to see if that really worked. Now I would say we give this a try. And I'm here in the JavaScript virtual machine and I'm first going to deploy my other contract. So I have that one, but I won't use that. And then I'm going to deploy my solidity changes. And here I want to copy this address and I want to call this, uh, want to transact with this call test function. And I'm going to give this the address of my other contract. And then I hit this and let's have a look if we have uh, our event in our logs uh, array. Yes, we have it here, uh, called function. That's this event here. So we interacted with the other uh, contract, with the function in the other contract running on this address. All right, that is the first part. Now let's have a look, what else do we have? The functions call, delegate call, static call, now return not only a Boolean, but they also return uh, a bytes um, to, to see the actual return data. So before you had like this Boolean success, if you call some address dot call, um, and now you have to change it, you actually get back a list with the success Boolean and the return data, which is really good. It's really cool. So you can actually work with return data now, even uh, doing low level functions. And that before, uh, as far as I know, just worked with uh, using inline assembly. 
and I really appreciate this change. So I've uh, had a look if we can uh, use that somehow with another call to the same other contract. So I have in my Solidity Changes contract, I have a function called call with return test. Uh, this also just gets an address. And uh, this actually already returns something. But not only that, um, I'm also using this uh, new list where I call my update with return function in my other contract and I get back uh, some data. Now let's have a look what this update with return function is doing. This update with return function gets one function arguments. It's updating my variable here, very simple. It's emitting an event just to see if you're actually doing something. And then it's returning this variable. And here we're gonna uh, return this as well, just to see if uh, we can have return data now in uh, an actual transaction. Let's have a look if this is working. I again copy the other contract's address and then I interact with my call with return test. And in my transaction, I see that I have a, a decoded output now and I have my logs and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I can work with this memory data inside this function now after calling the other contract as well. All right, what else do we have? Uh, we have a, a change in the scope here. Uh, you might wanna look into that. Um, the explicit function visibility is now mandatory. Uh, before in Remix, if you don't add a public to your functions or to your constructor, it gives you a warning. Now it gives you an error. That also means that if you have a fallback function that must either be public or external, uh, you can't have uh, any anonymous visibility anymore. All right. Uh, we have a change in how you treat the data location or how you uh, specify the data location for uh, variables. So if you have like this unsigned integer array, then uh, inside a function, then now you would have to specify where this actually is stored. It doesn't default back to anything. Which also means that if you have a function argument, with uh, an array, then you have to specify where this resides at. All right, let's give it a try. Let's have a look. So I have this, uh, I have, I, I made my integer array public so I can actually access uh, the indices there and see what is stored there. So um, I have my my uint uh, public getter function. And right now there's in index one, there's nothing in index zero, there's nothing. It gives me an error, I guess. Yeah. So now let's try and override this uint array with uh, some new unsigned integer array. And I'm just uh, hitting here like uh, one, two, three, and see if this is working. And now we have in our first index, we have the number one. And in our second index, we have the number two. So all I wanted to show you is uh, here I'm, I'm getting a memory array and then overriding my storage array with this memory array. And I have to, I have to specify that. If I don't specify this, it will give me an error. All right. If um, I have, I don't have any example for this one here, um, but I'm going to read through it with you and I'm just going to comment a little bit. Uh, explicit conversions between unrelated contract types are now disallowed. You can only convert from a contract type to one of its base or ancestor types. If you are sure that a contract is compatible with the contract type uh, you want to convert to, although it does not inherit from it, you can work around this by converting to address first. Example, if A and B are contract types, B does not inherit from A and B is a contract type of B, you can still convert B to A using A address B. Note that you still need to watch out for matching payable functions as explained below this. I'm gonna explain to you uh, what does that one mean. Um, you have to 
contracts which are compatible, but uh, Solidity, you didn't specify any inheritance or something. You maybe just have the same interfaces. So um, uh, Solidity doesn't let you convert uh, from one address to another just because you have uh, the same uh, the same interface. You really have to uh, let Solidity know programmatically that uh, one contract is a base contract of another contract and then it automatically can let you convert this or else you have to go via this address uh, conversion first and then convert it back to a contract all right um that's that's something the next one that i found a little bit more interesting uh, because it's used so many times so we have the address type was split into address and address payable where only address payable provides the transfer function. An address payable can be directly converted to an address, but the other way around is not allowed. Converting address to an address payable is possible via conversion through uint160. Uh, if C is a contract, address C results in address payable only if C has a payable uh, fallback function. If you use the withdraw pattern, you most likely do not have to change your code because transfer is only used on message sender in, uh, instead of stored addresses and message sender is always an address payable. So if you if you uh, use something like message sender.transfer, then you are safe. If, on the other hand, uh, you use um, a withdraw pattern where you get an address, then uh, you have to make this a payable address here in the function argument and I want to try this with you. All right, um, I have one deposit function so I can actually deposit some ether in there which I'm going to do now and then I'm going to withdraw it again to another contract. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to deposit 10 ether in my smart contract uh, from this address here so uh, at the end you should see something like 89. Let's deposit this. So it went down from 99 to 89 ether here. And now uh, let me copy this a little bit smaller here. Let me copy the second address and then let's just withdraw this here. So I have 110 ether now. The thing is, if I remove this payable here, then I suddenly can't transfer uh, ether to this address anymore because uh, this function doesn't exist on addresses which are not payable. So if you use a withdraw pattern or a transfer pattern where you transfer money to uh, some address which are given in an argument, then you have to make it payable. All right, then uh, the rest is already the rest was already deprecated for a long time and gave, gave you warnings uh, for example uh, suicide you you can't use that uh, key that function anymore you have to use self-destruct uh, you can't use SHA free anymore you have to use case 256 uh, call code uh, was long time uh, already deprecated and now it's uh, use delegate call and the last thing that I wanted to talk about where I have one uh, example here is getting the balance of something. So um, if you have a, a specify, if you have a contract, then the contract itself doesn't have uh, the balance member. It's only available on addresses. So a contract types do not include address members anymore in order to separate the namespaces. Therefore, it is now necessary to explicitly convert values of contract types to addresses before using uh, an address member. Let's say if C is a contract, change C.transfer to address of C.transfer and C.balance to address C.balance. You might have seen this before, especially here, uh, that this keyword I explicitly converted to an address before I can call the balance. The same goes here with the other contract address of the uh, where I basically give it an address but internally it will already be converted to a contract and then I have to call the address of the other contract I can uh, do this for example copy the address 
and then give me the balance of the other contract. It's zero because there's nothing in there, but it doesn't throw any error, it doesn't throw any warning. This is the way how it's done. All right, um, if you enjoyed this video, then um, like it, share it, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it. I'm always active in the comments. F uh, subscribe to this channel. And um, I hope there are not too many breaking changes for you. And I hope I can see you in one of my next videos.